I just found out that my battery is low, but that's fine because I already have other plans for today. Hi everybody, this is Luke. In this episode we're going to do things differently. I'm actually going to try a very normal e-bike. Not exactly my kind, but a very common one as an entry-level choice. In fact, not everyone is interested in building their own e-bikes. Most of the time, people are simply interested in a brand new, possibly cheap, pre-built one. Let's imagine that you just want to buy your first e-bike and that you're not really into all that terminology, specs and fancy big words. Let's say you just want a very basic city e-bike, absolutely legal, to commute to your job and for small casual trips to the grocery store. That's the kind of e-bike I'm going to try today. At a first glance, there seems to be nothing special about this rear hub motor based e-bike. But before looking closer to it, let's check out its specs anyway, for the sake of completeness. This one is called Leopard City Cruise and overall he has a quite elegant look. The battery is removable and housed inside the frame. As you can see, this e-bike is now on sale. And thankfully, because at its original price it would have been a little bit expensive considering its technical specification. This bike meets all the legal requirements in Europe. The rated voltage is of course 250 watt, while its maximum assisted speed is locked at 25 km per hour. It has two large 28 inches wheels and with its 11.6 ampere hour battery you have a declared range of 80 km. From this page we are also able to quantify the effective force of this up motor, which is 32 newton meter. Finally, we know that it has V-brakes, which is absolutely fine for a 250 watt rated motor. Let's now have a closer look at the bike itself. You may recognize some of the pieces repurposed from the take apart in the previous video. To be completely honest, I really like this bike. If you think about what it's supposed to be for, you'll find out that everything is right at its place. The upright position provides a very comfortable seat, since the idea is that you're supposed to be helped by the motor. The curved handlebar is another component that contributes to the feeling of relaxation while pedaling. Also, the presence of the chain guard, just like the front and rear fenders, is what really allows us to understand the nature of this bike, which is really meant for the city. Of course, like all respectable e-bikes, you have a front and rear light, powered by the main battery. You also have a 7-speed rear shifter, which we know doesn't affect the transmission of the hub motor, but it's still quite useful for your legs. Finally, the large basket and the rear light reflector are the kind of things that cannot be missing on a bike like this. If you have a fine eye like mine, you might have noticed on the rear wheel the Bofang logo marked on the hub motor. This vision started to stir a thousand thoughts in my head. The first one was that, maybe, it was possible to replace the LCD display with another, colorful one. If that was the case, it would also have been possible to unlock the max speed limit, like it is on mid-drive Bofang kits. In fact, the display connector is exactly the same. That's why I ordered the smallest colorful display that I knew for Bofang motors, the 500C. Clearly, and unfortunately, all those thoughts existed only in my head. Once I connected the display to the bike's controller, I soon had an apparently famous error 30. This error basically represents an issue on the speedometer which I soon realized it was not present on this bike. Most likely, it is integrated in the hub motor itself, making this display perfectly useless for my intended purposes. Not too bad, since I like it a lot, I will just use it on my 750W Bofang build. Alright, time for a ride! Differently from my mid-drive kits, this up motor makes a soft, weird sound during its functioning. Nothing too loud or disturbing, 
But it's there and I soon forgot about it a few minutes later, probably because of the wind. The driving position is very pleasant. It's a big change for me, coming from mountain bikes, but 250 watt is still plenty of assistance on a flat pad. Talking about steep climbs, well, you must do your part of the job. It's not like it's impossible or too hard to proceed, it's still way better than not being assisted. So, as a first electric bike is certainly a valuable upgrade over regular ones, surely the everyday use of 500 watt motors have softened me a little bit. Ok, for the time being, this e-bike has given me a lot of satisfaction. But there's still one question I need to answer. Can we increase its range? The most obvious choice would be to use a battery with larger capacity. To achieve this, I needed to intercept the two wires, red and black, that connect the battery directly to the up motor controller. Considering the position of the battery connector on the lower frame tube, I assume that the controller is placed on the upper hand. I haven't really verified that, but anyway, I started removing the lower end of the battery housing, the contact point of the original battery. Once I found the two cables, the big ones, I simply cut it and exposed them. The idea is to bypass the battery housing and move the wires outside of the frame. This full app gave me the freedom to install whatever kind of aftermarket battery, as long as it still meets the 36 volt rated voltage of this bike. I track connected my glorious 16.5 ampere hour battery, hoping that not only I would be able to power up the bike, but also to light up the front and rear lights. Let's see how that went. This time, I was successful. With this little hack, in case there's need to cover longer distances, or if the original battery simply dies, I could just connect the spare battery and be free from the manufacturer. Well, sort of. This is not a perfect solution, for two main reasons. First of all, the original battery housing will stay open, allowing all kind of dust, water and debris to be thrown inside from the front wheel. This might already be a sufficient reason not to go for it, but secondly, there's something worse. There's the high risk to fry the BMS, sure for battery management system, the battery's controller, in the not so remote case where both batteries are connected and turned on at the same time. The reason for this issue is well explained in this great video where this guy presents clearly not only the issue, but also the right adapter that will help you to overcome it. I put the link to that content up here. By the way, even if I don't encourage anyone to go for this approach, I think it's still interesting to see how easy it is to bypass your main battery, and in case you find a good spot to mount a second one, maybe connecting both batteries to an adapter, you could increase the range of your e-bike in case you really need it. Hey! Let's take a moment to make a few considerations. Surely buying a brand new bike is time saving. It offers some advantages over building one yourself. One of which is the manufacturer warranty. For many this is already a great reason to go for it. I absolutely agree. The downside to buy a brand new one is that usually the cost of the product is two or three times its real value. That's not always the case, of course, because some brands design their bikes specifically around the motor and the battery in order to provide the best possible driving experience. But that doesn't always happen for entry-level, low-priced bikes. If you don't want to spend a salary on an e-bike, your best choice is to build one yourself. This way you could invest in a better bike, for example, or in a bigger battery. And if you are into custom e-bikes like me, you will also value your freedom to change any component whenever you like. That said, I'm not against pre-built e-bikes. 
This one was fun and I can surely recommend it as a first electric bike or as a car replacement within the city. I might be interested in more pre-built ones in the near future. For now guys, I suggest you to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss the frame upgrade of my 500W Bafang Midray kit, followed by the reinstallation of the 500W Tongshen kit. Big content's coming. Also, feel free to hit the like button if you like this video. Thanks for watching and see you guys on the next one.